This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Indeed, we're live and a very special program for you today. And we're going to tell you what that's all about in just a second. What a gorgeous day. You know, this is crazy. We're supposed to have rain all weekend. It kind of bypasses that storm's headed up to the Massachusetts area in New England. They're going to pop up there. But we, you know, we, we avoided the shot, which is like super cool, right? Had the opportunity yesterday of, you know, driving around the countryside and enjoying actually the weather it was really lovely out in the western portions of Virginia. Went through all kinds of small communities. People are lovely out there. They're really straight up. You know, you get outside the metropolitan area and you can actually breathe a little bit. Not to say that we don't breathe, but nevertheless. We got a program today that is one that uh, is near and dear to my heart, but we'll talk about that maybe some other time, maybe later on. I don't know. But what are we talk- talking about? We're talking about degenerative joint disease or degenerative arthritis and the major causes, three of them to be exact. And we're going to put it in perspective of what it really is, what happens over a period of time. And that's going to be the topic of our in-house continuing education program this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax, just off the National Capital Beltway. We're literally probably about half a mile and very accessible. You can come from any direction and find us. We're back in office. And by the way, you know, you walk in our office and we have HEPA filters going and we have screening units going and so forth, and it's an extremely safe place. So please join us and we'll tell you how to make that happen. But my guest today, none other than the best of the best in our practice, the professor himself, Dr. Harlan Browning. Harlan, welcome. Thanks, Tom. Always good to be with you. It's fun. It's, it's always a good thing to go back and forth with you, and, and particularly on topics like this where, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding, if you will, uh, relative to how these things take place. And we know that any joint space can degenerate, and everybody thinks that it's a disease of older people. And we see it often in older people, but it's not just something that affects older people. It can happen uh, generally at, at any stage of life, generally as we were adults and older and from a lot of different things. But your your topic, your program is the three most common causes of joint space degeneration. And let's get into that a little bit. First of all, you know, is it something that just happens, you know, to a few people, a handful of people, or is this something that is is really – uh, pervasive throughout our, our society and, and, and people at large generally? Well, I, I certainly think it's it's relatively common, especially in older populations, but um, I don't think there's a direct linear relationship between your age and your destiny to have arthritis or de- degenerative joints. So it really is all about the things that your body goes through over time. Is there injury patterns? Are you carrying too much weight? Is there metabolic issues? Is there immune situations that are going on? So, you know, outside of, of, of trauma, you know, we can really control how healthy our joints are if we take better care of ourselves. You know, when we're when dealing with joint degeneration in our practice, we see a ton of it. We see shoulder problems. We see hip problems. We see spinal problems. In the spine, it's called stenosis, and many of our listeners have heard that before, and where the joint itself, the vertebrae, the bones have come together closely for a lot of different reasons. And that nerve as it exits gets crushed, it gets compressed. Uh, the hips get, you know, we talk about bone on bone, whether it's, you know, the hips or the shoulders or wherever. Uh, but let's get into that a little bit. And since, you know, we're saying that there's really no age group that this starts in, and we know that joint space degeneration can start very early on. 
is there a predisposition that we're going to make more people susceptible than other people to joint space breakdown? Um, I, you know, I would certainly say people that have uh, jobs that are labor intensive, you know, things like construction and stuff like that, things where you're going to traumatize the, the joints. But, you know, I don't think it's necessarily fair to say that um, that there's a certain group that's going to have a predisposition to having degeneration. Again, it's really all about controlling the outside factors that that um, cause the joints to break down. So. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about the, you know, the things that contribute to that. And then let's get into, you know, some, some other triggering mechanisms. Uh, people said, you know, how did I get like this? All of a sudden, you know, I've been doing really well and, you know, now I'm, I'm on a cane or my doctor's telling me I got to have a hip replacement or a shoulder replacement or they want to do a lumbar or a, a, a laminectomy someplace in the spine. Something caused that. The body was not designed to do that. And so we, you talked about trauma. Uh, how about stress and diet? Do those things uh, add into that as well? No, absolutely. If, if you're under chronic uh, stress situation, be it, you know, at a work situation or monetary or what have you, then you go into this fight or flight mechanism. You, you shift from a rest and digest a restorative pattern into more of a chronic alarm state, which comes with increased cortisol and, and all these other cascades of inflammatory type events that, that occur. So that's going to speed up the process of degeneration. There's that cortisol thing again, and that's a hormone that our adrenal system produces naturally. It's, it's the outer portion of the adrenal system, and it's there to protect us, to heal us, and so forth. But we do know that if cortisol levels get way too high, they are destructive. They break tissue down. And if they're too low, where the body's been beat up for a long period of time, the body can't fix anything. So that sweet spot that we're looking for, that normal rhythm of production that we should have is altered in many different ways. And that can come simply from emotional stress. And, you know, it can come obviously for pain patterns. People who, uh, here's one that uh, a lot of people may not understand, is that if somebody's in pain all the time, uh, you know, they're just popping pills to take care of it. We just talked about cortisol being a destructive form. Does that perpetuate the formation of cortisol? Does that allow it to continue to break it down without too much perception of the pain? Is it one of those catch-22 things? Well, I certainly think there's a layered situation going on. And, you know, I think in medicine we don't talk enough about the inhibitory effects of cortisol. In other words, what cortisol does to other organ systems or, or other hormone systems in the body. So in particular, you know, cortisol disrupts our sleep, but our deep quality sleep, REM sleep. Well, when we don't go into REM sleep, we don't produce growth hormone, so we don't heal. And that's why, if you know, most people will tell you if they have a really bad night's sleep, they just have a tendency to, to ache all over. Well, it's because of that inflammatory type of situation that's taking place during the night, and they're not clearing out those metabolic byproducts so people just feel lousy. So life can be interesting in that we have our, our slings and arrows on a day-to-day -day basis. You go out and you mow the lawn or you're hanging things up or you're moving boxes around or even you're sitting at your desk in a bad position all day long. And that's going to cause an inflammatory reaction or what we call it an inflammatory cascade. And now we go home and we're stressed out. We're watching the talking heads. We don't calm down. We sleep in rooms that are not necessarily the most accommodating to sleep, and we don't go into that REM pattern, so we can't heal and drop the inflammation and let the body reset itself, so we're in trouble across the board. I want you all to know that this Wednesday evening that Dr. Harlan Browning is going to be your presenter at the Results Center for Healing. He's going to give you the intimacies of joint space degeneration. If you're suffering from any kind of joint space arthritis or bone on bone and you want to know what the options are and they're all over the place today you, you know you get on the internet and you're going to say well you do this diet and you do this and you know you can have this stem cell injection and so forth which one is right for you well you know maybe we can help you do it in a less impactful way something that you can shift a few things and make some difference and all you have to do is is uh, get online go to rosellecare.com that's r o s e l l e c a r e.com rosellecare.com register for the class and or call the office real simple 703-698-7117 and tell them that you want to register for this Wednesday evening's presentation and, oh, by the way, give us a call right now, 888 and ask any question that you'd like to ask. We're here. We're live. 
and we'd love to have you uh, talk. So, you know, you said three causes of uh, degeneration, and that's the topic of your program. So how would you list those? Are any one of them more important than the other? Um, you know, certainly on the top of the pecking order, I would say, uh, you know, structural uh, injuries and, and patterns like that would probably be number one. Um, coming in at probably a close second nowadays because, you know, so many people's diets is, are so poor. I would say the metabolic causes of, of joint um, degradation. And then the third one I would probably say would be immune modulated. These are the types of autoimmune problems that people have. And you got to remember, there's a lot of autoimmunity out there that is not diagnosed and it just flies under the radar. So there's, um, th- there's a lot to be discovered moving forward in medicine on that end. You know, when you talk about autoimmune conditions, it, it, it starts from, you know, constant trauma it causes an inflammatory reaction that affects the intestinal tract, which now we have this thing called permeable gut, right? And anything, and when we talk about permeability, we're talking about something that should have a barrier that doesn't now, and it acts like a sieve and allows molecules that are undigested, foods and bacterium and, and viral patterns and so forth to get into the system and now causes this huge cascade of immune suppressive uh, production across the board. And now we have this immune function problem that you're talking about with all kinds of things that are going on. And it makes us much more susceptible to so many different things. Um, with all the stuff that's out and about, you know, for years we've talked about different viral conditions, not only this craziness with COVID, uh, but other viral entities as well. We live in a society that if, if the truth of it is, is that if we did a full blood panel on most people, they would all test positive for about 125 or more different uh, viral antibodies. How does that play into, you know, a, a small trauma that we should recover from, but we have this other stuff laying in our bodies? And does that, does that have any kind of prediction relative to, you know, it's going to be crazy or it's going to be very mild? Well, well, certainly the, the, the issue with um, excessive viral loads in the body, you know, things um, will be upregulated. The immune system will be on a state of heightened repair, so to speak. It'll try to fix things. And sometimes what happens, body doesn't repair the way it should. So it haphazardly does things. So if we already have a predisposed joint that's been, let's say, um, been broken down over over time, then the virus and, and the immune response will often go to the weakest link and start attacking that joint. So insult to injury, really. You know, before before the program, we were talking a little bit about Lyme and Lyme disease or Lyme problems are almost uh, epidemic. They're almost they're probably more severe, in my opinion, than even this COVID because so many people are being exposed to it and they don't realize it. And, you know, we talk about, well, you know, you're supposed to get a target. You're supposed to have this. But with that type of situation, and here's here's a, a whole different uh, platform, a spirochete of, of some sorts, if you will, that now is causing the body immunologically to be uh, predisposed. And now you have a trauma on top of that. Can something like that, somebody who's had those kind of conditions uh, that's really never been fully re- re- uh, resolved, are they more predisposed to joint degeneration? Yeah, I would definitely say so because there's almost always with those folks that let's say that have Lyme, there's an underlying chronic inflammatory state. So inflammation is really is, is designed to help break down protein. So inflammation on the short term is actually, it's very beneficial. Well, but when we have long-term inflammation, it's going to literally nibble away on our connective tissue. So it's going to make it weaker. Let's hold those thoughts. We'll be right back. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. My guest today, Dr. Harlan Browning. Don't go away. We have some really interesting information coming up. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rizzo. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. Indeed, we are. My guest today, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor, we are talking about something that is, I'm going to say it's a pandemic in this country because there's there's so many more people that are suffering from this than COVID. It's like craziness, right? What are we talking about? We're cause, talking about joint space degeneration and the major causes of these conditions. This You can call it disease. You can call it a syndrome. You can, But the end uh, game is that you've got bone on bone. You've got uh, stenosis. You've got problems. You're taking massive drugs 
you know, to begin to control it. And this Wednesday evening at the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax, Dr. Harlan Browning will be your presenter, your host, and he'll be getting through the, the intimacy of this. And the, the good news is, and then in the greatest majority of cases, this can be not only stopped, but it can be ameliorated in a way that you can get your life back. So give us a call, uh, 703-698-7117, and register for the class or simply go online at rosellcare.com. And if you'd like to talk to us today, right now, right here, all you have to do is call 888-630-9625, and would love to take your questions and talk you about some of the meds that you're on and what they're doing, and because some of the medications can make life worse. Dr. Browning, welcome back again. Harlan, listen you know, I just, I said a little bit about drugs and, you know, people are put on all kinds of medications and drugs to quiet down arthritic conditions. The problem is, is that it can make things much worse. How come? Well, I mean, certainly if you're taking long-term anti-inflammatories, then in many cases, especially the -the over-the-counter ones like the Advil's and, and such, they start to affect the way the body metabolizes sulfur and you need sulfur in your joints. And that's why people will take things like glucosamine sulfate or chondroitin sulfate. They, they're sulfur donors. So um, Advil impairs the, the body's ability to, to utilize sulfur. So what happens is we start to get degeneration in healthy joints when we're taking it long term. And then obviously without, you know, it doesn't, we don't have to, you know, think too hard about the, the, the side effects on our, our liver and our kidneys and, and our gut. I mean, there's just a, a, a huge amount of side effects that uh, people are just, they're causing a lot of problems. So, you know, you mentioned the, the competition, basically, is what you're talking about between the drug, Advil, and that includes all NSAIDs as well, any non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. They all do similar type of things, Advil, Motrin, aspirin, and so forth. They react the, that way. Uh, they do cause the joints to break down because they compete for that sulfur ion and or they lock into the same receptor site. Uh, so a lot of these super NSAIDs that are prescription types of drugs that patients are on and the suppressive nature of the anti-inflammatories that they're taking, in addition to that, they give usually both, can cause the joint space to become far worse over time. So, that is correct, Absolutely. So when you see patients doing that and they come in to see us and they say, well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm doing this until at some point I'm going to have to have uh, a hip replacement or I'm going to have to have a shoulder replacement or they're going to do a laminectomy and, you know, free things up. My question to you is this. Does it have to go that route? No, it absolutely does not. And the first thing that you need to ask yourself is, you know, what's the level of the person's impairment? Meaning it's it's one thing to have a lot of pain, but it's another thing to not be able to move. And there's a lot of folks that that have tremendous amount of discomfort, but their function and the, the way their joint move is, is still quite good. So um, those people are in a lot better position than they would think, where on the flip side, there's some people that have low level pain. But they're just their their mobility and their stability is so poor. But because they're not in a lot of pain, they never seek help. And and those are the people that typically go on to being bone on bone, like you referred to. So when somebody comes into the office and you see them, what's the typical presentation? What do you notice about them? They're coming in, you know, uh, are they coming in for pain patterns? Are they coming in, Doc, I'm just having problems, you know, uh, functioning? And how do you distinguish what's really going on? And is it a degenerative disease or is it something else? Well, I, you know, certainly people come in with a primary issue. But once you you start to sift through their complaint, you find out they have all of these ancillary other issues. Um, you know, on our intake form, on the back of it, we, we have a, a, a bunch of things that you can check off if you're having symptoms of it. And typically people check off a ton of stuff. So um, for folks that have degeneration in one joint, they usually have a little degeneration starting somewhere else. But again, because they're not in a lot of pain, they don't think about it. You know, this is a topic that I want to get into a little more in depth because it's one is personal for me, as you know, but there's other things that we need to explore. And I want patients to know that it can be fixed. We're coming up to a break. My guest is the professor, Dr. Harlan Browning, and we're going to get into some of the fixes as we come back after the break. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. 
Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Yes, we are. Indeed, we are live. And it's another fairly decent day outside. So make sure that you get out and enjoy it and have some fun. We have been very fortunate. The weather kind of bypassed us. It was supposed to be ugly yesterday, and it wasn't. It was very pretty outside. So hopefully you had the opportunity to make that happen. My guest today, none other than the professor, Dr. Harlan Browning. And we're talking about the causes of degenerative joint disease and why it's so, I'll say, pandemic throughout this country and the world. People do not take care of themselves. We're talking about inflammatory reactions. We're talking about the consideration of impact of injury on top of inflammation. And those inflammatory levels can come from stress, non-sleeping, dietary changes, and so forth. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Harlan Browning will be your presenter at the Results Center for Healing in Fairfax. Join us. Seriously. Come and listen to this man. Those of you who have heard him before know he's amazing. And the knowledge base, the bandwidth that he has is absolutely incredible. There's very few that I know that are like that. So give us a call, 703-698-7117, or simply go online, rosellecare.com, and hit the button that says register here, and we'll confirm and make sure it happens. Dr. Harlan, welcome back. Let's uh, let's go to the phones before we get uh, more in, into the, the meat of the program, because there's been somebody who has been very patient. Lauren, are you there? How can we help you? Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Rizel. I have uh, been listening to your show for a long time, and I know you're a master in your field, un- unmatched by your skill and expertise in your particular field of uh, chiropractic. And that's why I hope you can give me some advice on my arthritic knee. Um, I did some really, I, I injured my uh, knee uh, many years ago. And instead of, you know, you know, somehow you just twisted it the wrong way or something, I don't know what happened. But instead of doing proper knee exercises to help it recover during the injury process, the healing process, I did nothing. And uh, so what happened was the, the knee uh, itself became arthritic, and then it started to grow out of alignment with the other knee and leg. And I didn't notice this until too late and then fortunately one of my neighbors who's into uh the you know so exercises proper exercises for the uh for seniors and that sort of thing uh so gave me some uh some good uh you know uh knee uh, knee and ankle exercises and it helped restore those exercises some function to the knee and leg but the problem is the knee is still arthritic and it's still out of alignment so my question to you is would uh you know someone like you or with your skill and expertise with your manipulations be able to get the knee and, and leg back into a normal alignment so it reduced the arthritis and helped me walk better so let, let, let me ask you let me ask you a couple quick questions um uh, first of all are you able to go up and down stairs without any pain uh no okay <laughs> which one is what do i can go up and down stairs but i be, with the arthritis yeah there's a little bit of discomfort Okay. I, so that I I favor the other knee and leg, you know. Okay. Which yeah. which which is worse, going up or going down? Uh, huh. ooh, uh, probably going up, I guess, because I have to put more stress on the leg, probably. Okay. The fact that you're able to do it indicates that there's a lot of improvement that can be made. Doctor Browning, you want to jump in on that? Yeah. Um. You had an X-ray of the knee, obviously. Is that how they told no, you? No, I never went to the doctor. I didn't do anything smart like that. I just did stupid thing and just did nothing until I got those exercises. Then I started doing something, and I'm starting trying to bend the knee in the opposite direction of the bow. The bow, it's going outwards, the bow, uh, you know, alignment. And so I do a lot of painful exercises d- during the day, like sitting on you know, uh, on the floor with my knees bent, and it's very painful, but it does help keep the knee in alignment. So I do things, I do what I can exercise-wise, but that's why I was wondering if chiropractor uh, therapy might help with, the, you know, the sh- arthritis the, and the, the, sh- the, and the short out of an- alignment. So. The, short, the short answer is simply this. Uh, based on what you're telling me and the fact that you're able, the exercises have helped you, and the fact that you still can get up and down a flight of stairs, 
yes, there's uh, probably a whole lot that can be done. We look at things multidimensionally. We look at all the muscle patterns. We look at the the inflammatory levels that may be triggered by uh, dietary exposures or the, meeting the wrong things or things that you may be sensitive to. We look at the energetic platform in the body and so forth. But, Doc, you see things like this all the time. Absolutely. So, you know, there, there's always there's always hope. I mean, the first place that I would definitely start with would be get let's get an x-ray to, to quantify where the arthritis is and how much there is. Um, you know, we certainly can get deformity of a joint and get that bow leggedness or knock knees, um, you know, with arthritis. But there might have been an underlying congenital problem that you didn't know. There's something called tibial torsion that young kids will get where their tibia, their, their shin bones rotate inwards. And over time, that puts more stress on, on the joint. So, it, again, it, it big picture stuff, you know, a, a good physical exam, watch you walk, look at your shoes, look at the range of motion, and ultimately an x-ray, and then we can come up with a game plan. So I think that there's something that really can make a difference. We see things like this all the time. The amount of bone on bone. I mean, we've, we've, uh, helped patients through our, our sister company through Asian Health Regenerative uh, Medical, uh, group, uh, with stem cell, uh, w- and when it comes to really a bad situation like that, but, uh, manipulative uh, patterns, uh, it, quieting down the inflammatory situation, finding out what triggered it to begin with. Those are the most important pieces. But based on what you're saying, I think that, uh, there's a lot that can be done and, uh, Trust me, there's nobody better than Dr. Browning when it comes to throwing this out. Let's let's continue to go to the phones for a few minutes. James, you're sitting there patiently. How can I help you, sir? Yes, uh, I'm having problems with my right thigh. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, my right thigh. What's going on with the thigh, James? What's uh, what's the problem? Uh, uh, pain, pain. How long? Uh, how- what, what, moans. How long ago did it start? Uh, it started recently. Like did the you past do, two, two weeks. Did you do anything that may have triggered it? Did you injure it in any way, or did it just start up? I think it just started up now. I've been doing push-ups with no problem. Yeah, no, uh, last few times, I... Uh, as a push-up, I couldn't get back on my feet. Does it hurt you to does it Does it hurt you to go from a sitting to a standing position, James? Uh, I never tried. I don't think. Okay. So, how about how about going up or down stairs? Does that make your leg hurt more? That doesn't hurt. I just have uh, loss of balance. Got to hold on to handrails. If not, I'll like. Okay, got it. So there's there's generalized weakness, is what you're explaining. Uh, so that can be a lot of things that can start in your back. Do you have any low back pain? No. Okay. So what we have to find out if the muscles are firing properly. So your front of your leg is your thigh muscle, which is your quadricep muscle. The back of your leg is your hamstring, and then you have muscles on the side, which is your your TFL, your iliotibial band, your tensor fascia lata. You have medial muscles. So any of those things can be reacting one to the other. I mean, one's not firing the way they're supposed to, so it's putting more uh, stress on another one. So if we look at those, those are uh, and find out which which one is not working the way it's supposed to, that can be problematic. And we, if you fix those things, then all of a sudden you get your strength back and you don't have the soreness. Uh, Dr. Browning, that's pretty typical, you know, of uh, a lot of things that take place is that there's a, a weakness or a soreness that kind of come out from nowhere, but it's not generally it doesn't come out from nowhere. It just there's a reason for it. Yeah, and, and this sounds suspicious as if maybe it's being referred from his, like you said, the low back. It, you know, um, there might be some stenosis in the low in the lower part of the lumbar spine, which is causing that exiting nerve to be compressed and we don't have to have back pain we can just have you know just like he said thigh pain but what what the, is the, the the red light for me is the 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 weakness so that sounds like almost as if there's some sort of neurogenic nerve cause of this this pain so i would investigate that definitely further 
Yeah, the weak the weakness is concerning, uh, even more so than a little bit of uh, discomfort that he's explaining. The weakness is problematic, uh, and it usually is spinal related. It's just not uh, definitely. Uh, it's not just the the leg itself, but it's something that we see all the time. But you have to be very careful in how you rule it in or you rule it out. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Harlan Browning will be your presenter. The professor is really the guy that you need to talk to with all this stuff. Join us. Give us a call, 703-698-7117, or simply go online at rosellecare.com. Register for the class, and trust me, you'll have more data, more information than you thought was possible when it comes to subjects like this. Doc, you know, we we have a couple more calls. Actually, the the phone lines are lighting up today, and there's uh, and I don't want to ignore people, uh, but let's we're gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you another question or two, and then we'll you know uh, get back online. So here's the situation: you get somebody who uh, has pain, they have degenerative disease, uh, they're at a place where they they're contemplating. The doctor said, "Well, let's wait and see, and then you know we can." You know, we'll end up having to do surgery. When somebody is like that, can you reverse it? Well, certainly if, if, the, if the, the therapy is wait and see, then, you know, this person really should try some conservative things first. And, you know, and I, you know, I'll at least partially applaud the doctors that push the surgery out, and, you know. But what often happens is there's nothing conservative put in place. There's no, there's no rehabilitation, per se, that's, that's prescribed. So, you know, years can go by and then eventually the person needs that surgery because nothing's been done. So early on, we want to we want to assess it. We want to stabilize it. And we certainly want to rehabilitate it. So when you look at a patient, regardless of what the condition, but particularly the one that we're talking about, you're going to assess things from a multidimensional platform. You're going to be looking at, obviously, the things that cause inflammatory reactions that will settle in the joint. Um, the things that we've talked about, even stress and dietary patterns and repetitive injury, even muscles that are not strong. So you're putting more of a shift on a joint space someplace, right? And yes. then you're going to look at uh, bugs too. You know, we we touched a little bit on Lyme that can get into joints. We uh, any of the viral patterns can live in there. Particularly Epstein Barr has a propensity for joint spaces. So all those things can make a difference. So you end up with this. How many? Patients are just straightforward. I hurt myself and I didn't pay attention and now my joint's breaking down uh, instead of all these little different pieces of the puzzle being in place and causing the problems that they're presenting with. You know, it's a great question, but I would say, you know, it, it's, you know, maybe tw- we're lucky to get 20% of people who can identify an injury that caused their arthritis. Most people, they don't know. And a lot of times they forget the all the the micro traumas, the small traumas that they've had happen over the years. Um, so you've got to look at everything. If not, you're going to miss, you'll miss a piece and the, the person will, will improve, but maybe not get maximum improvement. We have a couple more calls. I don't know if I can take one more. We'll take one in the next part of the program. Ingrid, are you there? I am, doctor. Good morning. Uh, I would like to ask you about, I have a problem with my throat. It's gotten so, uh, where, where it's in the front, it feels like there's something in it, and you, and then when I swallow, it sort of hurts. But Ingrid, when did how long ago did how long ago did it start? Well, it's about a couple uh, of weeks, almost a month now. H- have you done anything and, about it? Well, I have a pulmonary. I'm I'm a dependent from uh, Walter Reed, and I had a pulmonary doctor, and he said he's going to have to put. Uh, but I haven't gotten in there yet. It takes so long. So I you wanted know, the, to know what I can do in the meanwhile. Well, there's something in your throat like that really doesn't make any any sense unless we examine it. It can be that the uh, the vertebrae, the bones in your neck out of position is causing the nerves not to work the way they're supposed to. So the the swallowing mechanism and the muscles are too tight. That could be part of the problem. Uh, if there's a lump, it could be a thyroid problem. Uh, it could be a lymph tissue that's too big. There's several different things that can cause it. And without really looking at it, it's very difficult, you know, to tell you what might be the cause. But we'd be happy to, you know, to look at it and give you that opinion. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Thomas Alive. My guest today, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor. Don't go away. We'll be right back after some important messages with 
another thought or two. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live, as you do every Sunday on the Eastern Seaboard at 11 a.m. And those of you who are out west, you know the math, right? You know the drill. And, again, we'd like to thank our men and women in uniform because you guys reach out, and I try to get back to you as rapidly and as quickly as I possibly can. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate you. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be us. Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor, is my guest today. He'll be your presenter this Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing. All you have to do to make that class is call us, 703-698-7117, or more simply, go online at rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com, and register for it, and we'll confirm, and I promise you this will be as always a very very information packed presentation we have another call i'm trying to look at our time frames to make sure that i do justice but we will barbara are you there yes i am how can i help you my dear yes i am how can Um, i hear you i want to can you hear me yes ma'am i sure can hello i can hear you um i Yes, I broke my knee in three places. I'm healthy. I'm 72. I'm extremely athletic. Everything healed. The surgeon sat there and said, you're lucky. It's healed. No pain whatsoever for about a month. And then right after that, all the way up in the knee, the spine, you can hear this cracking, this crunching. How did you break it? it? How did you break it, Barbara? My dog went one way. My dog went one way and I went the other. And you went down. Did they? How did they, they heal it? Did they just let it heal, or did they put screws in your knee? Yep. He, no, he said I needed no screws. I was very lucky; it healed perfectly. Okay. Um, but it's this crunch. It's the crunching all the way up down the left side, okay. and then like going uphill, I'm fine. Going downhill, it still hurts. And I think that my understanding that's kind of typical, and it'll take time for healing. But it's this crunching. That okay. my daughter, who has had issues, she said she's still crunching. So what is it that is? Okay, is let us ha- of- let's let's address it, Barbara, because we only have a couple of minutes. Doctor, you want to get into it? Yeah, that sounds what, like what we call crepitation, and that to me, I, I would suspect is more the kneecap. Now, what typically happens after an injury is we get a lot of contracture of of all the tissue that crosses over the knee, you know, the connective tissue like the ligaments and, and the tendons and the soft tissue like the muscles. So if that kneecap is being pulled outwards or inwards too much, then it doesn't sit in, in a nice groove, and then it, it makes a noise, especially going up and down stairs. You'll, it, you'll hear a gravelly-type sound. And that could be due, Doc, to muscles not firing properly after the injury. The, the trauma, the impact, not only to the kneecap itself, but to the muscles that are surrounding it uh, can cause that misfiring to occur and the crepitus to start after that. Absolutely. In her case, if it started, you know, a month after the surgery or when she was out of her cast, and it's it's really it would be unlikely that it's arthritis and it would be something a little bit more straightforward, which is great, which would be the connective tissue. So, you know, if you improve the mobility in there and there's probably trigger points and you get those muscles to fire, then the knee should be perfect. So, yep. Doc, you got a minute. What are you going to cover Wednesday night? Uh, we're certainly going to go through a lot of the, the causation behind arthritis. And, you know, I, I didn't have an opportunity to touch on it earlier, but we're going to talk a lot about the things that mimic arthritis. In other words, just because your x-ray shows you have degeneration doesn't mean point is causing the problem. So we'll talk about the things that surround it and cause um, referrals. This Wednesday night is going to be a blockbuster, my friends. Please join us. Register today. Make it happen. We're going to enjoy you. You're going to learn a lot. And remember, we're here for one reason, one reason only. It's simply this. You deserve it, and we love you. See you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. 
Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.